the biggest entrepreneur platform on the planet. This is Business Rockstars. Welcome to Business Rockstars. I'm Alex Worley, joined by Jason Knight. He is the co-founder and COO of Lotlinks. Thanks for being here. Pleasure. So if, first of all, you could tell us what is Lotlinks? So Lotlinks is an AI-based automotive uh, platform that finds shoppers based on user-declared make, model, year, and location information, and then matches them up with vehicles that we know they want because we're scoring and qualifying them through all of their process and then presenting those ads and driving those shoppers directly to the cars on the dealer's website. Awesome, so tell me a little bit about your entrepreneurial journey and how it landed you up starting this business. So, you know, I grew up in Detroit, which means automotive's in your blood automatically. And then I actually left to go to school in California and um, went into consumer products goods for a long time. So the classics, Procter & Gamble, and then went into the wine business, and then got into entrepreneurial businesses, all private equity backed, privately held manufacturing or some other growth business, um, built and sold three of those. And then after the last one, got connected with the other co-founders and founded Lotlinks. What is your definition of being an entrepreneur? What does it take? I think being an entrepreneur is about doing what other people aren't willing to do or are unable to do or haven't seen the vision to do. And then frankly, being too stubborn to quit. And you did work for other companies before being an entrepreneur yourself. What was that transition like? Because a lot of our entrepreneurs watching and listening, they're working traditional nine to five jobs and they're, you know, starting to set themselves up for success to eventually leave their company. So what did that look like for you? For me, it was really a, a bit of a required transition because I was a, an engineer by training, a uh, chemical engineer, which is not really related to anything I wanted to do. And then it taught me business. So I really had the opportunity to learn business from some amazing companies and amazing people, which then got me to think not like an engineer in most things. So for me, it was really about getting an education on things that I wasn't knowledgeable of and had no exposure to growing up or through college or anything else, and then just making the leap. And did you make a leap quickly or did you start your business while you were working for somebody else to really create, you know, a cushion for yourself? No, I landed on the shore and burned the ships. So the uh, once I left the nine to five world, it was all privately held, you know, build them, fix them, sell them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, everyone has a different philosophy around that, so I love asking about that. And also different philosophy, too, about whether or not you should go work for other people first and then start your business or just start your business right away. And, you know, to your point, there's so much value added in that what you learn from working for somebody else and learning from the best of the best. And I needed it. Mm -hmm. So I think some people can do it out of the gates. They don't need college. They don't need some of those other things. It was very, very helpful for me. Yeah. Were you ever afraid to fail when you first started your business? I'm always afraid to fail. I mean, I think that's what, uh, to a certain extent, pays off, at least what drives me. Because, you know, we talked about driven. I don't like failure. So you will fail. It's one of the best learning experiences you can have. But minimizing it is so critical. Yeah, so how do you deal with failure and being okay with the fact that there are going to be mistakes, not let any, letting it paralyze you, um, but letting it motivate you? I mean, I think that if you can fail quickly and cheaply, that's probably one of the really great success things uh, as an entrepreneur. Um, you have to be confident, stubborn enough, I think, to, to go with what you know is going to work. But you also have to be open-minded enough to, to pivot or to change course or to adjust as you go. So I think it's so important to move quickly, but to really take input. And that's true in life as well as work. Yeah, definitely a balance there. If you could go back in time, what advice would you give your early entrepreneurial self? Uh, don't let perfect be the enemy of good enough. Mm, done is better than perfect, right? <laughs> you can learn from it and then adjust accordingly. Yes. What was the best thing about starting your business and working for yourself? I think it's really about having an impact. So when, for me, when I was with the, the large companies, it was incredible training, but there was a bureaucracy. And there were so many other competing priorities that the right thing didn't always win. 
And I think as you get into something that you're passionate about and that you care about, like your own business or even just a smaller company, um, truly you can have more of an impact. And, and it's so fulfilling for everyone to, regardless of your level, have what you think and do matter so much. Mm -hmm. And I think that's just great. What's the hardest part about working for yourself? I don't have anyone else to blame. <laughs> and I would hate to put my family out on the streets if we fail. If you could make a startup toolkit, what would be inside of it, tangible or intangible? <sighs> Man, um, I think tangible makes it easy. It would be Advil, coffee, and uh, in a notebook. Yeah. And I think intangible is probably, you know, the, the, the thought process and the ability to see what you don't see and know what you don't know. Um, but be willing to stub your toe, but to, to fix it quickly. Mm -hmm. Have you ever hired friends or family before? I've never hired friends and family. I've been hired as friends and family. And I think that it's, I think it's important if that gets you the in, but then it really is how you perform. Because so often there's a, an expectation, a social contract, and I think that just can't happen in business. Yeah, my follow-up question is, is it a good idea or not? So it sure. sounds like it depends in your mind. I, I think so. It depends on the person, certainly. But ultimately, so much about life and, and work is about the connections you make and the things that you know and who you know. And friends and family is just one more relationship that, that gets you, you know, potentially, you're already in sync, let's say. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Um, if you come in and, you know, it's your brother or your sister or your spouse or whatever, and there's an expectation that you don't have to perform or work as hard, um, I think that's a bad thing. Sure. When you make a tough decision, do you go off of your gut or research? Time willing, data. Mm -hmm. Without it, you have to go with your gut. Okay. And would you rather hire someone with an MBA or with great intuition? I would rather go for uh, experience and potential over an education. Um, so I, I, the latter. Mm -hmm. uh, who would you say is your number one mentor? I've been blessed to have a lot of mentors. Um, every industry I go into, I try to find people, and it's sadly not very hard, who are a lot smarter than I am and, and more diligent. Um, and so I, I try to learn from them and just you know pump them, sponge them for information. What would you say is the best advice that you've gotten from one or more of your mentors? You know, I'd say know that customer. If you understand the market, you don't necessarily have to do what they, the consumer, the customer thinks you need, but will allow you to find out perhaps potentially even what they don't know they need. But that really starts with knowing what you need to do and what the needs are. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to take a quick break. When awesome. we come back, we're going to talk about building the business. So sit tight. This is Business Rockstars. I'm Alex Worley, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to Business Rockstars. I'm Alex Worley, continuing my conversation with Jason Knight. He is the co-founder and COO of LotLinks. So take me back to the beginning. Where did the idea come from for LotLinks? The internet has changed so many things in so many industries. Um, we saw how people had changed their shopping behavior, but really the, the category and the segment hadn't caught up. And so there were these, these paywalls and lead forms and you couldn't get the information on a real-time basis um, or, or even in a transparent basis as it stood today. And we saw a huge opportunity to, to really collapse and remove barriers for the shopper and the seller, the dealer, and you know, really put those two together. Mm -hmm. How did you come up with the capital to start the business? Uh, there are um, two other real co-founders and, and we frankly bootstrapped it, um, which was a, a blessing and a curse, uh, but it was always really self-funding and you know, we would raise capital as we need it, deploy it, raise more capital, et cetera. Any advice when it comes to raising capital? I mean, I think that for business and certainly for this, it was all about spend less, sell more. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's it for us. It was good to have some scarcity because it made us make decisions and make um, choices. And so often, I think if you're flush in the beginning, you can spend it wildly and and not really get the bang for the buck. Sure. Uh, so you said that you have co-founders. Tell me a little bit about your co-founders and just kind of the key players in your business. I mean, it's it's easy. We have um, our chief technology officer is Rob Busick, and then uh, you know our chairman and and CEO now is uh, Len Short. And so initially it was just 
the three of us trying to, you know, make a business of it. What would you say has been the biggest challenge so far? Automotive is a, an incredibly stable business and segment. And so going in and, and making disruptive change is really challenging. And so being able to appropriately communicate what we do and how we do it and getting folks to take the time to understand it, I think has been a challenge. Um, because being on the right side of history isn't always a recipe for success. It's really about getting people to notice that and understand it. So can you expand upon how you have gotten people on board? Yeah, I mean, thankfully, we have a spectacular product, so success and results tend to drive a lot of that. Uh, but when we started, we frankly were probably six months too early with where we thought the business was going and the category is going. And really, you know, it goes back to we were talking about being um, committed and stubborn. We knew it was right. And so as we've done, we found people who are forward thinkers. We found people who are early adopters. And we've really made them incredibly successful. And that has given us the, the tailwind and the data and the help and the, the awareness to really you know, continue to expand down the line. What would you say has been the biggest success so far? The industry now talks about VDP views, which is one of the things we focus on, which stands for vehicle detail pages. That's the information page on the dealer's website for the individual vehicles. And that has been so central in everything that we've done and what we drive those shoppers to. And it's all correlated success. And people have now come on board to say, and I say come on board, but have agreed with and, and built the business around these are incredibly important. And this is the, the money page for, you know, mm -hmm. moving that metal. What would you say are the three biggest lessons that you've learned throughout this journey? I think be willing to fail quickly, I think, uh, is the first and foremost. The second is listening to your customer and hearing what they're saying and what they're not saying is important, is critical. And the third is just how do you make, how do you reduce friction from the, the experience either with the dealer or with the shopper or both, even better. Mm -hmm. So is there an exit point? And if so, what is it? I don't think we have one defined. Mm -hmm. um, I think in automotive, there are frequently, uh, it's a very acquisitive space. We have no plans to exit. Um, I think we have just so much more upside and, and growth that we can accomplish. And, and frankly, so much more of the industry for us to um, innovate around that I don't see an exit plan. I don't see an exit point. Um, inevitably, you know, one may or may not show up, but I, mean, I, I think we all love what we're doing, so it's not something we think about. How would you describe your leadership style? I, I strive to be inclusive and open, and so I think it's, it's so critical that you get other people's input because you hire great people to do great things. And so if you just hire folks to execute, they're not really gonna provide input or value beyond what you say. It's so important to get folks who are good and are growing and have that upward trajectory in their mind and their career because they're gonna make you better. Awesome. And lastly, if you weren't in your current role, what position or title would you like to have? I would probably do something around medical research. So, you know, cancer society or heart health or something else just to, I don't know if it's give back, but just something that, that I care about and that, you know, helps others. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for stopping by and sharing your journey with us. Really Pleasure. appreciate it. Thank you. I'm Alex Worley, and this is Business Rockstars.